Good morning and welcome to Disciples Principles of Faith. We are glad that you're joining us today. We're looking at the doctrine of the life of Christ and we're looking at that whole area of the gospel of Christ, the good news of Christ. We've gone through already six principles uh, or six portions or pieces, whatever you want to call it, when it comes to the whole area of the good news, the gospel of Christ. Remember, Christ came to give us good news and to surround us with good news, to seal us with good news, to empower us with good news. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's what our seventh point is going to be today is looking at the whole another part of the good news is the Holy Spirit. Because after Jesus ascended into heaven, he told the disciples to go tarry. And so often we, we think of the good news ends at the um, ascension of Jesus Christ. And the truth of that is, it is not. The good news keeps going on. There is at least a number of key points that are part of the good news. And a, a major part of the good news is that Jesus, yes, ascended into heaven. That was good news that he ascended up there, intervening on behalf of us. But also another key part of the good news that he was not going to leave us comfortless. He was not going to leave us alone and that he was going to speak to the Father who would send forth um, uh, the Holy Spirit to speak into our lives and to be with us and to comfort, teach us, direct us, guide us. And so that's a part of the good news. That we're not just having uh, uh, information or a biography of Jesus, but it continues to, to go forth. And we see this in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, that he said, I will send forth a promise. I will keep the promise. Go and wait for the promise all these titles that will come from the Father and that will indwell you and empower you, that he would indwell you and empower your heart for service, for being a witness. And I must admit, that's what I've seen in my life, how the Holy Spirit has empowered and not only taught me, but made it possible for me to be a witness to others. Not in my strength, not in my ability. You know where I would come from, where I lived, and how I grew up. You would say there's no way. And there is no way in your ability and strength. But there is a way, there is a truth, and there is a life in Jesus Christ. That's what the good news is all about. And so when we look back at this doctrinal point con uh, concerning the gospel of Christ, and part of the good news is the coming of the Holy Spirit. We can see not only this uh, being taught by Jesus to the disciples, telling them to go and tarry, but also uh, it is there prophesied in the scriptures that the, this would take place. Again, each, each good news gospel point that we've talked about has Old Testament Hebrew scriptures that prophesy about what was going to take place. That's why... You know, the good, you could call it good news because things were being fulfilled as the scriptures said it would be. And let's look at a few of those prophecies that go forth. Proverbs one twenty three says, Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you, and I will make my words known to you. Proverbs one twenty three. Did you hear that? I will pour out my spirit on you, and I will make my words known to you. You know, that's why James could say, if you lack wisdom, ask of the Lord, and he will give it to you generously. But the generosity of the wisdom of God comes in walking in the Spirit of God. Amen. Isaiah thirty-two fifteen says, Until the Spirit is poured out upon us from on high. You know, Isaiah was prophesying there was a time coming when the Spirit would be poured out from on high. Isaiah goes on in, in 42 verse 1 and says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect one, now pointing to the Messiah, my elect one, all capitalized, 
my elect one whom my soul delights, exclaims attention, I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. As in an interest, I shall put my spirit upon him, and he will, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, not only bring, you know, uh, a word of understanding, of wisdom and knowledge to the world, but also was going to give his spirit of himself to those of the Gentiles, those who would have faith. Ezekiel thirty six twenty seven. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. You know, when you read some of these scriptures, you must begin to ask the question, is that some of the problems that we're facing because we're not allowing the Spirit of God to speak into our lives and to cause us to walk in His truth. And because if we, if we are walking in the power of the Spirit, we're able to keep the judgments of the Lord. We're able to do the Scriptures. We're able to fulfill what God wants to speak to us. Then again, another prophecy talked about in Joel 2.28, probably the most familiar one that many of us know, it says, and it shall come to pass after that, after that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall have visions. Now, I'm not sure if I'm in the old man category or the young man category, because I get both still. But it talks about in those days, in that last day, there's going to be a pouring out of the Spirit of God on the flesh. And you say, well, what do you mean by flesh? Upon humans, upon people that would um, look to the Lord through faith and believe and ask God to fill them with their Holy Spirit, not only to seal them, but to fill them. And there is so much we could talk about. Now, we're not going to talk about everything concerning the Holy Spirit today. We've got another whole chapter on that, that, that that's going to take months to go through. But we're just looking at this whole area of the Holy Spirit as part of the good news. Wouldn't it be interesting if we could go around from place to place and place and say, Hey, I've got some really good news for you. What's that? God wants to fill you. Have faith in Jesus Christ and let him fill you. And then I could go back around to all the Christians that who once were filled and ask them, Why don't you be filled again? where the joy of the Lord would be your strength. And, uh, you know, they say, well, sometimes Christians say, well, been there, done that. No, it's no being there, done that. It's a continuation of an infilling that we're going to see. Zacharias, uh, Zacharias said in, in 4, 6, he says, the word of the Lord of Zerubbabel, not by, my, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And again, this idea of Lord of hosts, the, the head, the, the captain of the Lord's armies, you know, the Lord of hosts is, you know, going to empower you. And it's not going to be by your might or by your power. Oh, boy, we're doing so much nowadays in our might and in our power, in our thinking, in our wisdom. But we don't understand that we just got to turn it all over to Jesus. You know, there are so many people that are going through anxiety and stress and worry and fear and everything else. And as long as you camp in that camp, you know, you're going to probably struggle with all kinds of things. But if we walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, if we wait upon the Lord and let Him renew our strength, wait upon the Lord and let Him, you know, empower us, so that we can have the Word of God, be able to see the Word of God, be able to have the dreams of God, the visions of God. Well, then as you move into the New Testament, we've got a number of scriptures that Jesus now is going to talk about, and also the the, prof, or, um, the apostles and the, and the book of Acts and in Ephesians 2. And let's look at, just highlight some of those before we go on any further. In Luke twenty four forty nine, behold, I have send I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued from power on high. So, isn't it interesting? The promise of the Father 
which was given to us both in the Hebrew Scriptures and also through the life of Christ. That's why it's good news. He said, you know, go tarry, go wait. We don't know much about tarrying and waiting. I've been thinking a lot about this the last little while. The importance of the power of prayer. The importance of tarrying before God and letting God empower us with His Spirit. Letting Him direct us with His Holy Spirit. Letting Him use us, you know. And every day when I'm in the mall, I'm praying, Oh God, when people come up, Lord, I need Your wisdom. I need Your Spirit to be with us. And so how we can communicate, because the flesh would go a different way of speaking with people. The flesh would rely on its own education, its own all, its own knowledge, its own ability, where we want to walk in the power of the Spirit and say, okay, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want to do? Who, who do you want me to take time with? Who do you want me to pray with? Who do you want us to minister to? And to realize this is... The promise of the Father is for everyone, for all, that we can just pray and ask the Lord that, that they would go and tarry before the Lord and that they would wait. I know we say here, this scripture, tarry before the Lord in Jerusalem, but I get also from it that we as believers need to tarry before the Lord. And as you do, you will be endued with power from on high. God will give you direction. God will give you insight. And then we see this being fulfilled in Acts chapter 1 and verses 4, 5, and 8, where it says, And being assembled together with them. Okay? Being assembled together. And I like this. The togetherness. The becoming together. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Here it is again. To wait for the promise of the Father. It was told us in Luke uh, 2449 and now it's telling us again wait wait for the promise of the father we have a father you know i i i think about this whole idea as a father sometimes and yes we fall short i've fallen short as a father too but i often can remember and and in spite of all the challenges of my growing up and and all the difficulties you know, there was lots of times that I would I would just be waiting for my father to come home. Waiting for him to come home. I would be there alone and I would just be waiting for the father. To see what my father has to say. To see what my father has to, to speak to. And it's the same idea here. Yeah, I know a lot of you have had bad fathers and bad father images. I have too. I got that. But the truth is, is that the promise comes from the Father. And he goes on, which he said, You have heard from me, Jesus said, I've told you this. For John truly baptizes with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And not, and not in many days from now. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The problem with, with many Pentecostals, we want the power to come upon us to do what we want to do, to be able to, to walk the way we want to walk. But in reality, the power of God is to come upon us to be witnesses. I'm amazed at how many people tell me over and over again, well, I, I couldn't do what you could do. No, I can't do what I do either without the power of God. It's the power of God that makes us the ability to witness. I am surprised at how many people say to me, I can't witness. I can't share my faith. Well, then go and tarry before the Father. Go and wait for the Father until you are empowered from on high so that you can be the witnesses for the Lord. Then we go over in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. And it says, And when the day of Pentecost, and the day of Pentecost was 50 days later, had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. Now, I love this again. There, there is a body ministry. That's why I, I'm praying, you know, God, raise up more prayer warriors. Let us have times of, of being together in prayer at the office, you know, that we could be in one accord about what God, you know, I mean, we pray and try to pray in the office as much as we can with each other, but we need to establish times of prayer. Times of coming together and being one accord. So in one place, you know, so we're in one accord, we're in agreement, but we're together about what God's going to do. 
And while we're doing this, notice, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and filled those in the house where they were sitting. Again, they were tearing. The Father wants to give His promise to us. But we need to tarry before the Father and we also need to gather together one with another before the Father. You say, well, this is just for Pentecost. No, I believe there's principles in here, not only on the day of Pentecost, but for every day of our lives. And they says, and then there appeared and then divided, uh, divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them. And so we see that the Holy Spirit, when they came together, the Holy Spirit did not only touch them corporately, but he touched them individually also. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues and the Spirit gave them utterance. Now we're not going to go, we're going to talk about that part of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit when we get into the, the chapter concerning the Holy Spirit. Then we go on into Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 to 14. He says, In whom you also trusted after you heard of the word of truth. Do you believe that the promise of the Father is a word of truth? Have you trusted in the promise of the Father, that the gospel of your salvation, here is the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, whom is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption and purchase possession to praise or to the praise of his glory. God, God doesn't want to leave us out there all by himself. He wants to minister to us. He wants to speak into us. He wants to empower us. He wants to give us the promise of the Father. He wants us not to have to walk in our flesh, but to walk in his presence day by day. You know, uh, often, often, we feel weak as people. Oh, I feel so weak. I feel so tired. I feel so run down and all of and all. And yeah, in your own strength, you will. But there is a place that if you wait upon the Lord and tarry, not a quickie prayer, but a, 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 an intentional waiting upon the Lord, both individually and corporately, you will see the power of God. You will see that what God wants to do, that he wants to give us the promise of the Father, that he wants to baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Now, people get all bent out of shape on this idea of baptism. It means to be, you know, when you think of, of immersion, the waters of immersion, the waters of baptism, that is a testimony we're to give. That means that we're to die to ourselves and we're to be totally covered over. Well, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, again, is that we die to ourselves and be totally covered over and filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 1-4, again, we talked about this, but I think it's good to read it again. And being assembled together with them, they commanded them to not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait, 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 wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John is truly baptizing you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. Well, we have the joy where we can come before the Lord. We don't have to wait many days. We don't have to wonder, well, it will be this time or that time. Or do we have to wait for a revival to take place? None of that you have to wait for. All that you have to do is wait upon the Lord. Come to Him. Come into His presence with thanksgiving. You know, the Psalms are a book of coming into the presence of God. David would often come into the presence of God being grumpy and being tired, being overwhelmed. And as he spent time with the Lord, all of a sudden his strength would be renewed. The power of God would be made clear in his life and he would move forward. And I find the same thing. I find the same thing. I wish I, I would have a little uh, button that would come on in my mind that when I get into that tiredness and that, you know, woes is me type thing, a little bell, you know, just like you have a phone that, that warns you about things or you have lights in your car, you know, the oil is too low or something's wrong with the car. I wish every Christian would have a little buzzer in them that when the, when the oil of the spirit is low, it would go off. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, beep. okay, now it's time to go back to prayer. It's time just to enter in. I need that. And I think all of us need that. And we need to ask the Lord to help us in that. So in the coming of the Holy Spirit was to empower us because see, Satan wants to uh, uh, grip us and, and, and 
overcome us, where the Holy Spirit wants to grip us and, and, and make us strong and to be able to stand against the sin and things of this world. You know, the disciples, for them, they needed to receive the power. All of us really need to receive the power. Why? So that we may grow. See, the Holy Spirit is like water. When we get into uh, some of the titles, some of the names of the Holy Spirit, He's like water. You know, you're just a dead seed laying in the ground until the water of the Holy Spirit comes upon us and then begins to uh, awaken that which was uh, dormant in us, causing us to grow, causing us to be a witness, causing us to be overcome. And, and the thing is, the demonic forces want to come against us. Satan wants to try to destroy, but God wants to raise up with us. And that's why when the Holy Spirit is, is, is talked about in Joel 2, 8, which we read, which we said, and it shall come to pass... It shall come to pass that after that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young, your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall have see visions. Is that just something that just happens once in a while? Or is it something for us each day that as we wait upon the Lord? And, and that's the part of the good news. You know, God doesn't leave us out there hanging. He brings to us his presence. You know, he wants to empower us. And that's why when, when the scriptures were talking about what the Lord wanted to do, we see again in John chapter 14, when it talks about the Holy Spirit, verses 15 to 17 and 26, Jesus states this. He tells us, he said, if you love me, isn't it interesting? If you love, he's saying to the disciples and to us, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my direction, keep my way. If you really love me, you will do this. If you don't, you will do after your own flesh. But if you really love me, keep my commandments. And then Jesus said, look at this. This is amazing. And Jesus says, and I will pray for you. And I will pray that the Father, he will give you another helper. And that he may abide in you forever. That he would give you a helper. Oh, do we need help? Does the church need help today? Sure does. Do we need, as people of God, need help today? Sure do. We need help, and he will say, and he will abide in you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. The world doesn't understand it. There is people who come to our table at the office. They're not believers. They don't understand why we do what we do. I've got family members that don't understand, like, why, Jim, do you do what we you do? Because the Spirit of Truth comes upon us, sent by the Father, to help us, to empower us. He goes on, the Spirit of Truth whom, whom you cannot receive, because it is neither sees Him nor knows Him. He's talking about the people of the world. But knows Him, for He dwells with you, and you be in, and will be in you. Let me try that again. It says, "The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him, nor knows Him, but Colwyn's famous word, but you know Him, for He dwells with you, and will be in you. You know Him." You know him, and he will be with you and dwell with you. And then he goes on in verse 26 and says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Anointed One, in the name of Emmanuel, the Father will send him, the Holy Spirit. And he will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all things that I have said. You know, he's going to bring it to pass. He's going to help you to remember. And so the Holy Spirit wants to come and seal us, but also is there to be a guarantee for us in, the, in knowing that we're part and we're part of the family of God, that we are in his presence and that we live with him. He wants to mark our body, soul, and spirit with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And so that the enemy, when the enemy looks at us, they will see that he's a child of God. Remember when Job, how did the enemy, how did Satan know? Well, because Job walked uprightly and righteous in the Lord. The presence of God was with him. And, and, and God was going to use his life to be an example. See, he wants to seal us and to prepare us. 
but not only to prepare us for his kingdom and to to seal us with the power and the anointing of his spirit, but to bring us to the place of being his ambassadors here that we can go out and proclaim his kingdom. You know, the disciples need the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome the grip and hold of the world. There is no way to overcome the world. The world is always speaking at you. You need this. You should. You want this. You should go after this. And the only way that that grip and that hold can be overcome is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Breaking those chains and those cords that so easily bind us, so easily hold us. And so we need to trust in the Lord. And so they had to go into the upper room. They had to tarry. They had to wait because God was going to bring something more powerful than you could ever dream because it was the good news. And what was that good news? That he would send forth the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit would touch the people, that we would become his hands and his feet. We would become his voice, that the Holy Spirit became became, uh, became our encourager, our teacher, our comforter, both to the individual and to the church. We can do what we do because of the work of the Holy Spirit in us. But we need to be filled so with the Holy Spirit so that the fruit of the Spirit, you know, speaking to people at the mall, and speaking to other Christians, you need the fruit of the Spirit. You need all the fruit of the Spirit. What is the evidence, you know, what God wants to pour through us is the fruit of the Spirit. And He wants us to give an attitude and He wants us to change our lifestyle that it can only come by the powering of the Holy Spirit. You know, He wants to come upon each one of us. He wants to change our lives. And that we need to understand the power of the Holy Spirit is there to fill us, but to empower us for service. You know, I've, I've had many people, you know, come and say, lay, Pastor, lay hands on me. You know, pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon me. And sometimes I want to ask the question, and why do you want that? For what purpose? Do you have in mind, well, I just want to be able to be filled. Well, the purpose of the filling of the Holy Spirit is not only to help you to be an overcomer, but is to empower you for service. You know, someone come up to me yesterday in the mall, and they said one of the sad things he saw that's going on in the Steinbach, and, and, and that is how people say, well, I don't want to serve in this area. I don't want to serve in that area. You know, God hasn't spoken to me about serving in this area. You know, what God wants to do is just use you in service wherever it may be, however small and however big. Quit giving all kinds of excuses of where you can get involved and not get involved. Just do it. Well, how can we do it? Well, you can do it by tearing and waiting upon the Lord that He fills you with the Holy Spirit, empowers you so you can do it. You know, you want a good example of how God is changing people's lives? Look at the life of Cohen. Come on out of the mall, watch her, sit in a chair across from her, and watch her speak to people, watch her talk to people. That's not her power. That's not her ability. That's not her words. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit where she can speak to children and, and, and young people and moms and dads and pastors and all that. It's not in us. Quit trying to wait till it will be in you. You just need to get to the place that you say, Lord, here am I. Fill me for the work of service. Empower me. And so here this pastor said, you know, one of the biggest problems that we have in Steinbeck, I didn't say it, he said it, is that there is a loss of a servant heart. And that just tells me if there's a loss of a servant heart, then what's the problem? Well, the problem is there's a loss of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Because the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is going to empower us for service. Now, you may not like that, you may be comfortable where you're at, but that's what it's all about. It's not a toy you play with. The Holy Spirit is not a toy. Oh, look what I got. I can I can do this. I can do that. You know, I I I no. The power of the Holy Spirit is to empower you for service. And people that know that are out serving. People that don't know that are still waiting. And the thing is, he's going to empower you so that you can begin to serve. It's a daily process. You can't do it under your own, on your own strength or your own ability. That's why Paul was telling the, the Ephesian church, hey, you need to be filled daily. You need to come to the Lord. Well, I don't have time. I'm too busy. You know, I've got too much going on. Then you're missing the mark. You're missing what God wants to do. A lot of times we don't want to come into the presence of God because 
we have more fear than we have faith. Where we need to have the power of the Holy Spirit upon us. You know, we're so busy being busy. You know, instead of taking time. I, I've been reading a lot of biographies and, and by a lot of people. And one thing that keeps popping out all the way through. Why do these people have powerful ministries? Why did God use them? Because they prayed and waited upon the Lord until they were empowered. And then they spoke the word of God. And, and they went out and, and saw the captive set free. Exactly, exactly what Ezekiel talks about in Ezekiel 33. That we're to be out. We're to be out in the highways and byways. You know, it's, it's such a fun thing sometimes to be in the mall and just watch people walk by and give you a thumbs up. I guess they've been on Facebook too much. I guess now the people don't say hi. They just they just walk by, give you a thumbs up. That means, hey, it's good what you're doing. We're, we're thankful for the call that is on your life to get out there. But the sad part is they keep telling me, well, we could never do that. <laughs> well, we couldn't do it either. <laughs> Let me tell you. It's not in our ability. Do you think it's easy? Do you think that, you know, we, we what, Cohen and I sit around here and, you know, eat a big meal, pump ourselves all up and pat each other in the back and go, oh, no, we got to pray. we got to pray and wait upon the Lord and say, Lord, use the team. Use us. Use us wherever we want, whatever, and fill us with your spirit. And you say, well, sometimes, you know, you could sit there for an hour and nothing happens. But you know what you can do while you're sitting there for an hour? Pray, pray, and pray more. Because what God is interested in is to infill us and to empower us with His Holy Spirit daily so that we can go out and proclaim. You know, Paul wanted to tell the church in Rome, you know, that they needed to walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, Paul says, he says this here in Romans fifteen thirteen. Now may the God of hope fill you. Do you have hope in God? Yeah, let Him fill you. That's the good news. The good news that we have in Jesus Christ that he wants to fill us. And look what he says, that the hope fill you with all joy and peace. You know, people are wanting more joy and they're wanting more peace. Where does it come from? It comes through waiting upon the Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, Christians, we got to stop looking like we've been run over by a cement truck and start realizing <laughs> that, you know, our God raises us up. Our God redeems us. Our God delivers us. Our God empowers us. Our God fills us. And you know what? I'm talking to myself right now too. You know, when you're not filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, you're full of despair. Things look hopeless. There isn't much joy and peace. But when you surrender yourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, then the power of God is there. And that's why it's such good news. The Holy Spirit is good news. The good news of Jesus Christ didn't stop at his ascension. He said, there's more yet coming. There is more. You know, there is more that God wants to do with you, with me. There is more. We just don't say, well, we're going to go through the Christmas. We're going to go through the death and we're going to go through the erection. And then we're going to find ourselves staring up in the heaven, waiting for the coming of the Lord. You know, if I had a dollar for every time people tell me they're waiting for the coming of the Lord, I would be a wealthy man right now. <laughs> What we need to be, oh, I need to have a dollar for us where just people come up and say, I just want more of the Spirit. I want more of Jesus. I want, I want God to empower me for service that I can maybe be able to be used by Him. I had a man, as I told you the other day, that came up to our table. He's in a wheelchair. He's probably 90 some odd years old. And he's asking God to give him the strength to speak to one more, to bring one more in the kingdom. Is there some, you know, and he took a bunch of our booklets and he took them home with him. And he says, I'm going to keep talking to people about Jesus. Because we need to tell them that Jesus can set the captive free. We need to move them. He was so concerned of how many people are religious but are not spirit-filled. How many people are walking in a form of religion but are not walking in a... Here's this... And I just thought, man, I want to sit with this guy for a long time. I call him, don't call him. I hope this guy comes back again. And I'm going to clear a space at the table and say, here, come and sit with me and let's let us together... Let us together 
uh, allow the Spirit of God to come in us and pour out to others. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a senior citizen sitting at the table in a wheelchair, you know, uh, and, and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ? How can he do it? He can do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can do it by the power of the Holy Spirit who wants to indwell us, who wants to light up the pathway that we're to walk. And, and wants us, the Holy, do you get it? The Holy Spirit wants us to have victory. Victory to overcome the things of this world. But you know what the enemy wants to do? Is keep us so busy and keep us so, you know, there's not enough hour. I, I must, I got to confess this. I think yesterday I went and I, and I talked to, the, no, maybe on Wednesday, I talked to a number of people who were in the office and said, I'm praying for something. They said, what are you praying for? I'm looking for a country that they're, that they have longer days than we do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they knew what I mean. I'm looking for a place that maybe they have days that have 36 hours or 48 hours so that we can accomplish everything. No, God can give you and empower you to accomplish what needs to be accomplished in within these 24 hours. He can give you the joy and the peace. He can give you the hope. You know, and the disciples, the Holy Spirit, we as we need to understand the Holy Spirit as a third part of the Godhead is there to minister, to comfort us, to be our guarantee. You know, He guarantees that as you go out today, He'll be with you. He guarantees whatever you're going to do, you He will be with you. And not only that, He will comfort of you. Man, the people that go by in the office, I've never seen so many people that are stressed out, that are just burned out, as it were. They need the comforter and power of God. They need their lives filled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit and so that they can be involved in service. You know, the Holy Spirit wants to fill us so that He can then fill us with the fruit of the Spirit so that we can demonstrate uh, in, in service you know, the love of Christ, the body of Christ. This is what it's all about. This is what we need to be doing. This is, you know, we just got, can you imagine if you could just get to the place that each day we would be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit and allow the fruit of the Spirit just to flow through us. That's it. That's our goal for the whole day. Whatever we do, allow the fruit of the Spirit to go through us. And I remember I, this week I talked to somebody and I was, I was a little bit, you know, not happy about what they said and that. And I, she, that person caught me off guard and I was driving around town. I was driving around town. I thought, nah, nah, you know, I was right. I was right. I was, you know, I'm always right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even though people tell me I'm not. You know what I did? I drove back to that place and I waited there for 15 minutes because the person was busy. I just stood there. People kept saying, can I help you? Can I help you? No, nope. <laughs> I want to see that person. And I and after that person got empty, I went over there and I said, I'm so sorry. And she says, what? What, what did you do? I said, you know, I got a check in my spirit that I wasn't quite right about how I shared things. And I want to let you know, I went and found out more information. I went and prayed and I'm now back. And I said, will you forgive me? And that person, you know, there was a piece of plastic between us. She moved the plastic aside and she leaned forward and said, yeah, I understand. And she said to me, will you forgive me? And I said, why? I said, because I didn't understand what we were talking about either. <laughs> and I just thought, praise God, that's the fruit of the Spirit. And I was able to go home released. She was able to go home released. And, uh, you know, it was just amazing. I haven't even told Colwyn this because, I, you know, I'm pastors do do she doesn't even know what kind of trouble i get into sometimes you don't want to tell your wife that some days when you're by yourself you do stupid things and this happened to be one of them. but cohen i made it right because <laughs> the holy spirit the fruit of the spirit because i pray that oh god let the fruit of the spirit you know minister to me today but you know the antichrist the devil the deceiver he wants us not to understand the power of the holy spirit he wants to un us to understand. There was a guy that spoke to me yesterday, and he was talking about these kinds of games and that, and he said, ah, they're just pieces of plywood. And I said, no, they're not pieces of plywood. They're demonic. 
And he was shocked. And again, maybe I was a little bit strong, you know. But the thing is, if you don't believe in the, the body, soul, and spirit, you won't have any idea what I'm talking about. Because the enemy wants to come and quench the fire within our spirit. The Satan wants to come and deceive and destroy and to rob us of our spirit. And he's done a great job of that. You know, the enemy has an army. And, that, and, and the enemy has a spirit realm. And he's out there trying to, to destroy. But Paul says, realize that your battle is not against flesh and blood. Realize that you've been given the good news and put on the full armor of God and push back the enemy. That you're not waging a battle in flesh and blood. Oh, I wish we could just stop fighting so much in the flesh and blood. I wish we could just give it up. That flesh and blood fighting once with one with another. That flesh and blood fighting between ourselves and the world. That flesh and blood fighting between each other as Christians. Oh, if we could just give it up and say, you know, here, Lord, use me. You know, that I may... Uh, walk in you and see Satan wants us to keep dwelling in the flesh and blood oh if he can just get more stuff more things if you could just have more uh, comfort things that you could comfort your mind instead of realizing you know what I need to do today and I'm getting this I'm you know I, I'm I'm at nighttime turning the TV off more often and I'm going upstairs putting on some good Christian music some hymns and that and saying oh God put on me clothe me Oh God, with the fullness of your Holy Spirit. Because the enemy wants to destroy. He seeks to destroy. He seeks to be, to take away. And Jesus tells us that in those last days, you know, that there's going to be many signs and miracles, but they're not going to be of God. They're going to be of the devil. And that we need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit so we can discern what is the right and what is wrong. You know, the power of Satan, the domestic host is all around us. The false teachers are around us. And in this last days, we need to be diligently to get into the word and let the word get into us and discern what is truth. And and that, and that to push back Satan, push back uh, the, Satan's realm. And, and uh, I love it, as I said before, my brother, one of my brothers have said to me, you know, doing what you're doing is... You know, do you understand, Jim? You know, a lot of it's in. Yeah, it looks like okay. You're doing these things in the in the body. You know, we're teaching every morning, and you're giving us things that we're to think about in our head. But do you realize? He pointed out to me that everything you're doing, you're pushing it back the realms of darkness. You're pushing back the strongholds of Satan, because you're proclaiming every moment we proclaim the word, every moment we speak the word of God, we're pushing back darkness. Amen. And we need to do that. We need to do just standing in the mall. We we're talking to some friends last night for supper. Just standing in the mall. You know what that means? We're pushing back darkness. Being a light for Jesus Christ is pushing back darkness. This is no longer the stronghold of the enemy. It's the place of victory for our Lord Jesus Christ. And that we need to be filled with the power. We need to stand up and defeat the satanic army. Not by our own strength and power, but we need to join together. Wouldn't it be great? Can you imagine what it would be like if all of us as believers would, would put on the full armor of God? And then allow God to fill us with his Holy Spirit and anoint us with the fruit of the Spirit. What, what would happen in our community, as we gather together, as we begin to jo rejoice, as we begin to praise, as we begin to overcome, what would happen? But the religions of this world want to possess us. They want to bind us. They want to take away, and, and they want us to get our minds all hung up on wealth and prestige, not realizing that the real battle that we must daily walk and daily take up is to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So, as I conclude today, again, isn't that good news? Come on now, isn't that worth something going out and telling everybody? I got some good news for you today. The whole world's full of bad news, but I got some good news. What's that? You believe in Jesus Christ, and He will fill you and empower you and give you joy and peace so that you can be overcome and you can break the cords and chains of the enemy. Seems to me that's pretty good news. Well... Our gospel creed for today is the big question. Do I, as a disciple, believe and commit myself to this seventh point? This is number seven of the gospel creed. 
where it states, I believe and confess in the Holy Spirit, who, as one of the three persons of the triune God, is sent by the Father to regenerate, baptize myself into the, the, the body of Christ and fill us as believers his disciples with the power, anointing, then the fruit of the Spirit, gifting us then with those gifts so that we may go out and serve the body of Jesus Christ throughout the world. Do we believe that? Do we confess that? And the answer, I pray, will be, yes, Lord, here am I, use me. Yes, Lord, I confess in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, I pray that you will anoint me, not just to be anointed for myself, but that you will anoint me with the fruit of the Spirit, with the gifts of the Spirit, so that I can go out and serve the body of Christ and to go out and to be an ambassador for you today, Jesus. Amen. Isn't that good news? Praise God. We love you. Keep on keeping on. And Lord willing, we hope to see you on Monday. And those of you around that are close to this time back, come on out to the mall. Let me, let me tell you some more good news. Let me pray for you that you can receive the power of the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, don't lay it aside, but take it up. Take it in. Receive it. And then give it out. Amen. Let's pray pray father we thank you lord god for what you're about to do and continue to do and lord i ask that your holy spirit would empower us for service lord that we would no longer be a spectator will but we would be a participator and lord that you would empower us with the fruit of the spirit oh god that it would flow through us this day and lord that you would take the gifts that you've given us and use them for your service now in jesus name we pray amen and amen god bless you I'm excited about what God's going to do today, and I hope you are today, too. And if you want to, share this message with someone else. See what kind of fire or problems it causes in their life. Amen. But I'm telling you the truth. This is the Word of God, and the Word of God is life. Amen. Get into the Word and let the Word get into you. Take some time to tarry with the Lord and let the Lord tarry with you. Amen. God bless you. Love you from now. Bye-bye.